so I'll give a question to both of y'all to start off. Uh, I'll start with Michael. Um, I was really fascinated by the brotherly relationship between your two characters in this movie, uh, you know, Jed and Boone. So what's it like working together to capture that relationship and also seeing it evolve over the course of the runtime of the film? Uh, interestingly enough, I think that's one of the easiest elements of the film or one of the elements that came easiest. You know, Neil and I go back over 20 years together. Uh, we first met and really worked together in Band of Brothers and uh, in, had been in touch and, and uh, watched our families grow uh, and grow together over those years. Um, Neil reached out to me uh, early on, asked me if I wanted to do, wanted to do the project. Uh, uh, I said yes, sight unseen, um, because of our relationship and the fact that we got to just basically work together the entire time was just icing on the cake. Um, you know, it, it was just that that part of all of it was easy. And then the rest, we just played, you know, with these two incredibly, incredibly misunderstood uh, characters. Um, we just uh, we're, we're at different crisis points in our life um in the in the in the movie uh, and we ch each choose a different way to move forward um uh, really great script really simple script you know straightforward uh two men on different paths headed directly towards each other what happens i love that really well. that's a good point smart guy isn't it smart. yeah neil you have anything uh, added to that yeah, I mean, we, you know, it's, it's when the script came to me and then I was, you know, attached as a producer, the first person that, that I called and the only person I wanted to play Jed was was Michael. Uh, and luckily, with his busy schedule, he found that little window and he came in, and played. And, and, and I can never say thank you enough to that, because when the villain doesn't work in a film, the film doesn't work. And I've played a lot of villains and, and, and I know that uh, when the villain does work, it, it allows the, the, the hero to be that much more heroic in, in situations uh, and, and to go nose to nose with Michael. Um, there is that certain trust that we have with each other and that friendship and that love that we've had with each other for so, so long that it oozes out on the screen. And then when the two of us have to go nose to nose at the very end of the film, I'm not going to give away anything that happens. It's not easy. It's, it's a very hard moment for both of us to, because as characters in the film, we've grown to really care for each other. And as us in real life, it's the same thing. So it, it was a very tricky situation. In fact, the ending changed a little bit because it is Michael without me saying anything, without giving the point away. Something happens in the end of the film because of the relationship that I have with Michael. And I, that never, that ending never would have been the way that it was if it weren't Michael Cutlett. So it would have been vastly uh, different and not as poignant. Uh, and, I, and it's because of our personal relationship. And dude, I can't tell you, thank you enough for coming and playing with me. My pleasure. That's incredible. I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, and I also want to ask about working with Derek Presley as the director. Um, this was all, his, only his second feature film, I believe, but I feel like he definitely has confidence in his feature filmmaking vision already. So I just want to ask about that collaborative process and uh, what you both noticed about his um, directorial style working on set with him. Well, well, I, I love as a director, I, my, you talk, you talk to him like I was gonna say mine's smaller because yours is a, a bigger scope thing. But for me, what I loved is that, you know, he was uh, he was a huge fan of mine. Um, and I only say that that sounds self-serving, but it, it, that's not the purpose. He, he was a huge fan. And, and Neil knows that when you when you come in contact with um, producers and directors who are huge fans, that can be a huge problem because they just let you do whatever you want to do generally. And then, and that's not good because you need a director who has a vision, someone who's going to tell you what you, they are expecting from you and what you need and what they hope the hoping for and what their vision was when they, when they started this. The great thing about this was I came into it for someone who was a huge fan that he didn't just step out of my way. He had some very specific ideas that he wanted. And I came in with my ideas and he was like, I'd love that, but, what, what about this? Or if we push it a little bit in this direction and he was not afraid to step in, which again, That's is right. sometimes a, a problem when someone is a fan of your work, you hear that, you know, Oh my God, I'm a huge fan. You sort of go, Oh boy. Okay. That means my, uh, my work just doubled because you're not going to necessarily be looking at, you're going to go, no, whatever he wants to do. 
this was not the case. Um, right. and, and he, he, he did have a vision. He knew exactly how he wanted to shoot. He knew the look of the film. Uh, Neil will speak more to that because he had uh, uh, obviously more time and, and they, they set the whole project up together. Um, but I had a, had a great time with him. Yeah, Derek's one of those guys that um, he knows what he wants. His, his shot lists are prepared. He knows everything of, about how to tell his stories. In fact, we, we just did part two, which he also, I co-wrote with him and he directed again. You know, as far as directors go, they're, they're, I love working with Derek because he knows what he wants. And like Michael said, you'll come in there with, with your ideas and generally our ideas at this level of our careers are always kind of, kind of spot on. But there's always that little bit of tweaking and he's not afraid to come in and say, look, here's this little thing we want to do. And not yelling in front of the cast and everyone. He'll come up to you and put your arm around you and say, I think maybe you try a little bit of this action. What do you think about that? Okay, go. Here we go. All right, keep it going. Do another one. And he's, he's very at ease with, with that. He seems like he's been directing for 50 years, uh, but instead he's, he's, he's a newbie, but he knows what he wants. And he's a film geek like Tarantino. He's seen a thousand films and he knows the genres and he, he really studied it really, really well. And, and he's, He's very talented, and I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed to be part of his camp. Yeah, and I think you both alluded to this, but Neil, from what I understand, there's another project in development with the same character, uh, Boone. Uh, so what is it specifically about this character and also working with Derek that kind of keeps drawing you back and um, convincing you to tell more stories with that character? Uh, the, the character Boone is, is something that I've always – aspire to tell stories with characters like this you know those 70s types of, you know, of characters simple gray flawed anti-hero but at the end of the day gets the job done and then when we wrote part two and we, we finished it uh Cynodyme has bought both of the films uh and and boone will come out sometime uh in the first quarter uh it's it's we have a blast together and we kind of think the same way and I really trust Derek's vision and, and, and the way he tells his stories. And, and I have full faith in him. And, and he's a terrific human being, but he, he's also just an amazing director. And, and it's great. You know, the vision is what it all is. And I, I had a blast doing it. And I'm looking forward to doing it more and more with him. Yeah, most definitely. And um, you know, the film Redstone, I feel like one, you know, one of the main themes that stood out to me was how it was a story about kind of people being changed and having their eyes opened to certain more empathetic sides of life. Um, you know, after working in a tough business for so long, but then having, you know, seeing some of the more softer sides of things. Um, and so I'm wondering if that can be connected to working in the film industry at all. Um, both of you have worked, uh, you've been actors for quite a while and worked over the decades. Um, has working in the industry for that long changed any way that you look at the world, either personally or professionally? Um, I, I'm, I'm working so long and, and I still don't understand why. <laughs> you know, I'm blessed. And, and I think that's what keeps me driving myself forward all the time is that um, I love what I do. I want to keep doing it and provide for my wife and kids. Um, but, I, but at the end of it, I love doing what I do. I'm really comfortable in front of a camera. It's one of my most comfortable places on the planet is being in front of a camera creating. When you get to be in front of a camera creating with, with a director that has great vision, bonus. When you get to create with, a, an, with an actor who is the same as you with a director who has a vision, that's gold. And I think that we struck gold in Redstone because we didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of time. But we had actors who had confidence and faith in, the, in, in Derek's direction. And I think that's why we did part two. We're going to do part three and keep moving with this character. Michael, you have anything uh, you want to speak on that? Um, what was the question? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm just listening to Neil. I'm just literally like, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't blame you for that one bit. Neil has some great things to say. Just but, um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, he, he, so, he just fell asleep. No, okay. not at all. I, I know you were talking about how we've been in it for a really long time and, you know, and how, how, how has that changed us? Is that the... Yeah, so I was kind of connecting that to the journey of your characters in Redstone and how, um, you know, with, with their journeys, I feel like they have certain, certain uh, moments where their eyes are kind of open to the more empathetic sides of life. Um, and, you know, they've worked in the tough business for a long time. And I'm wondering if you can connect that to your own personal experience in the film industry. I, I my gosh, I hope that uh, life experience and moments that 
affect you deeply, you know, happen to everyone and that those changes do affect you. You know, I know for myself and and I will speak for Neil on this. I know that us being involved with Band of Brothers profoundly changed our lives moving That's forward. Right. You know, and that is absolutely a work thing. That's a situation where you have a, a work situation that becomes something and totally transcends anything that you think it could have or should have been. Look, we're in the entertainment business and helping people escape letting people laugh or feel things outside that in itself is, is a, is, is hopefully a gift that we're giving to people where they can sort of escape life for a minute, be transported. And that's important, but very rarely, if ever, do you do something that does all of those things and affects families specifically and affects a generation and teaches um, a generation and, and generations after what uh, a whole group of, of, of people had gone through in a, you know, at a crisis point in civilization. I mean, these are, this is like crazy big stuff that we were, were given an opportunity to deal with in Band of Brothers. Um, the birth of our children affects and changes our work. We both have been blessed to have amazing um, women in our lives that we're married to that change our lives moving forward. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know, not to, not to, to, sort of come back at your question as you know um in a negative but i don't i don't see how you're not affected by the things that happen to you in your life um that's that's and then life. you draw from it yeah you get to yeah, draw from it you know that's uh that's what pushes us forward you know and you make changes and, okay. and things happen and they and they make you reassess your decisions and, and then you you move forward and sometimes you realize you you can't go back on something you did so you have to keep pressing forward and and come you know some other outcome but again that that's that's life you know mm -hmm. and hopefully we're affected right. by it. hopefully we make changes that's right yeah i really love that uh well again michael right, I'm, I'm, I'm being i'm, I'm yeah, yeah I'm, 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 in, I'm i'm in agreement 100 percent with mike 100 yeah. percent yeah well, again, I really appreciate that, that we're lucky to have the wives that we have. That's what I'm really yes. with you on. Yes. And we both Ray go, and Rachel both, should have their we, own show. We both well, we both think our our the our wives are amazing and we we both think that they're intelligent, and beautiful, and smart. And then we go, how smart well, how you, did they we miss be? did we miss they could Because like what, what are you, <laughs> you you chose us. How they smart can you both. really be? <laughs> There well, you have it. Yeah. Well, again, Michael Newell, well, I really, really appreciate both of you taking the time for this today. It's been an honor speaking with you. you. Yeah. And, well, God uh, bless you. Have a great day. Thank, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Y'all too. Appreciate yep. it. Take care, bud. You too.